The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Peter turned and saw following them the disciple whom Jesus loved, who had lain close to his breast at the supper, and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. The saying spread abroad among the brethren that this disciple was not to die. Yet, Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die. But if it is my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did where every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that will be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everybody, and how are you? We turn the good news another Saturday, and we give praise and all glory to the name of the Lord. And of course, we know last Sunday we celebrated the Ascension Sunday, and then we were told about how Jesus himself actually uh, ascended to heaven, but also before he did so, he promised the Holy Spirit to, his, to the believers. That we'll be celebrating tomorrow on Pentecost Sunday. The Gospel of today was the last, is the last chapter of uh, the book of John. And it talks about actually after you know, the, 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 the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the disciples felt that uh, their hope had gone. And eventually they had gone into what they used to do before. Like Peter and some of the disciples said, well, Peter said, I'm going fishing. And others said, I will follow. And we know that after that, Jesus himself still revealed himself to them, even when they went fishing, by telling them, you know, performing another miracle of catching a multitude of fish. And that followed by Jesus challenging Peter. Peter, do you love me? He said that to him three times. And of course, after each time, Jesus, I mean, Peter testified to the, the fact that he loved Jesus. Jesus said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb, and feed my sheep. But while Jesus and Peter were moving further, they found John. We are calling him John. The gospel did not actually mention the name John. He only said the disciple who actually laid his head on the breast of Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? We know that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the story of the Last Supper. So we say this the disciple Jesus loved. And generally we believe is, is John. So Saul, this John and Peter was saying to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Will he remain when you come back again? And I love what Jesus told him. You know, Jesus, the, the disciples have been bothering themselves with the issue of the second coming. Lord, you say you will go, you will come back, you are going to restore the kingdom to uh, freedom to Jerusalem, and then we are going to be free, we are going to be saved, you are the Messiah. When is this going to happen? When you say you are going, when you come back, will this man be there when you come back because you love him so much? And Jesus said, even if I wish that he be alive till I come back, what is that to you? That should not be your trouble. The only thing you need to do is to follow me. The same kind of tone that Jesus spoke to them during the, uh, uh, his ascension. They were asking him, Lord, when will you do this? When, are you, when is the coming? And Jesus said, that is not your problem. 
Nobody knows the hour, nobody knows the time, the day, the, the, the moment. All that you need to do is to be my witnesses. Why are you worried about what I do with others? You worry about your life and how you manage your life. And of course, how you continue to follow me. And we know that, of course, after, they, after that, they, they have disappeared. They, they know that they have a, a bigger task ahead of them to make Christ known to the whole world. Which, in the first reading of today, St. Paul actually did. Today, we're talking about he is now in Rome. He's been taken to Rome as a prisoner, but a special prisoner. I call him special prisoner because he was left to rent his own apartment in Rome, of course, being guarded. But he spent two years there, still ministering to the word of God, because he was not being maltreated. God gave him all the necessary freedom and the boldness and the privileges to proclaim the good news. Today, I said this is the last chapter in the, the, the John chapter 21 is the last chapter of the book of John, the Gospel of John. And John was saying something that I just want to pay your attention and my attention to today, maybe to correct some things we say. And that is the scripture says, but there are also many other things which Jesus did. Where, where every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that to be written. And I'm pointing our attention to that because many people always will believe that uh, outside the Bible, there's nothing else. And I've heard many people saying, if the, it is not in the Bible, I'm not going to believe. But I want to tell you, even as you are watching me right now, is it in the Bible that you should watch TV? No. There are a lot of things that happen. The Bible is a collection of the different word of, uh, inspired book, word of God. But it's not the total of it. There are many other inspired books that are not in the Bible. There are many other writings about Jesus Christ that were not in the Bible. There were many acts of the apostles that were not in the Bible. There are many traditions and the practices of the apostles that were not in the Bible. So I'm just using the opportunity to tell you, the Bible is a powerful book. It's a book of wisdom. You can relate everything in the world with it, and you can find everything fitting into it. But there are still many other things that are not there. There are, again, there are not many other things. So, and you can hear that from John saying, even after John finishing his book, he says, that if we were to write everything that Jesus did, the whole world would not be able to contain it. Another thing we used to say is that uh, do not add to it and do not remove from it. And when I hear Christians talk about that, I always laugh because it's the ignorance of the scriptures. Because when you check Deuteronomy chapter 4 and some other chapters in Deuteronomy, you find the same word Moses spoke to the people. Do not add to this law and do not remove from it. And that is particular to that law. When John in the Revelation, Revelation talks about it, it is also about, he said, about this revelation, particular to that book of Revelation, not the totality of the scriptures. So again, I'm just bringing that at, just to our attention that sometimes we become too, too, too passionate about the word of God that we think nothing else can be, cannot be added. Remember, by tomorrow we'll be celebrating the Pentecost. And what did Jesus tell us about Pentecost in John chapter 16? He says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will teach you everything. And guess what? We are still in the era of the Holy Spirit. And at the era of the Holy Spirit, there are still many revelations that can come. God still reveals himself to us every day. God still passes messages every day. Messages that are not in the scriptures. But guess what? Where you know the authenticity of is that it should not contradict the scriptures. That's what you have to know. When God is revealing himself to you, it will not be a word. When Christ is telling you about things or the Holy Spirit is revealing some mysteries to you, will not be against the word of God. It will be a kind of a supplement to the word of God. And it's still the word of God because it's the revelation of God himself to whoever is saying that. Again, the Bible is very powerful. Bible is a, is a sacred book of the church. The church is not made for the Bible. The Bible is made is for the church. 
And that's why the church talks about the scripture and the tradition. The scriptures and the tradition, the scriptures forming the tradition of the church and the tradition of the church still being based on the scriptures. They are very interwoven. But the, the God himself who has called his church and is still ministering in the church continue to reveal new things, new vision, new mission, new things to the church every now and then. Uh, what is that all to us is just that as we continue to celebrate this period, you know, we're just passing from ascension into the Pentecost. We continue to ask for the insight of the Holy Spirit to teach us more and more about the Word of God so that the Word of God will be the source of our lives and will make us closer to the divine, to Christ himself, who is the word of God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy weekend.